Maybe, maybe not. Okay, well, thank you for the introduction. And uh, before I begin, I would like to thank uh, all the organizers for the invitation. It's a real pleasure for me to be here. So this is a joint work with Benjamin Jourdain, who was my uh, PhD advisor. And although we are uh, probabilists, and my talk will be uh, actually essentially determinist, deterministic, in the sense that I will uh, introduce a particle system which evolves according to uh, deterministic dynamics and which will uh, permit to construct solutions to hyperbolic systems of uh, nonlinear PDEs. So before I talk about uh, hyperbolic system, I will begin with uh, just a scalar observation law. So this is the main equation I will be interested in. I will be interested in. in. So I assume everyone is more or less familiar with uh, this uh, conservation law. So let me just recall that conservation mean that means that the okay. This not work very good. Conservation law means that the space derivative here is written under a conservative form. Scalar means that the conserved quantity, the u here, is a scalar quantity. And one dimensional means that the space variable, the space variable x is a scalar, or is one dimensional. So I will be mainly uh, interested in um, the Cauchy problem here with initial conditions u naught that are non-constant, monotonic, and bounded, func and bounded functions, and up to uh, an affine transform of the, of the flux function uh, lambda here, then there is no loss of generality in assuming that this uh, initial condition u naught here is the cumulative distribution function of a probability measure m on the real line. So uh, it is uh, this uh, equation here is a uh, an extremely well-known object, uh, both from uh, physicists and uh, mathematicians. And in particular, it is known that the, it is generally easy to construct weak solutions to this uh, problem. But in general, these solutions fail to be unique. And therefore, in order to recover uniqueness, you have to supplement the equation here with an entropy condition. And one way to do this is to use the Tushkov entropy conditions which amounts to requiring that uh, the function u satisfies the following uh, inequality in the distributional sense for all constant t between 0 and 1. 0 and 1 here are just taken because it, they are the bounds on the u naught. Okay? So Tushkov ther theorem states that there exists a unique function satisfying this family of uh, entropy con conditions. And of course, if you take c to be 0, then here is just the derivative in time of u. Here, the, the sign is constant. So the derivative of this, of this constant here cancels. And you just recover that the time, the time derivative of u plus the time derivative of lambda of u is non-positive. Of course, if you now take c to be 1, then you obtain the reverse inequality. And at the end, you have that an entropy, well, a function satisfying these family of uh, conditions is necessarily a weak solution to the initial conservation. Okay. So besides, uh, Kushkov the Kushkov's theorem states that if you start from a, an initial condition which is the cumulative distribution function of a probability measure, then at all positive times, you remain, the solution remains uh, a CDF. Okay, so it is a, a classical uh, trick in the study of, well, it's not a trick, but classical method in the study of uh, first order uh, PDEs that they can be solved through the method of characteristics. So here to apply this method, I have to assume that the initial measure M does not weight points, which amounts to assuming that the initial condition U naught is continuous. And then, as long as uh, the solution ut is continuous on the real line, 
I can use the classical chain rule, for chain rule formula for uh, visualization. And this derivative here, we write under the non-conservative form lambda of q times the derivative of u, where this small lambda is the derivative of capital lambda. And therefore, my conservation law becomes equivalent to the transport equation here. So the characteristic, the characteristic flow associated with, the, with, with this transport equation is defined by this uh, differential relation here. And of course, it is defined so that, so that the solution U be constant along the characteristic flow here, okay? But putting this information that the solution is constant along the, char the characteristic flow in this relation here implies that the slope of the curve xt is constant. In other words, the characteristics are just straight lines. Let me illustrate this here. So I take my uh, initial probability measure m to be concentrated between these two points here, so that here u naught is uh, 0 and here u naught is 1. First, I draw the uh, characteristic uh, started from this point here, so it has a constant slope given by the velocity function lambda evaluated at zero. Of course, since my uh, solution is monotonic, everything which is below this line is, wo is uh, null, at least as long as uh, the solution is continuous and the equivalence with the transport equation is valid. So now let me draw the slope, the characteristic starting from this point here. Depending on the values of lambda of zero and lambda of one, it can happen that this uh, characteristic with, with the, will uh, cross each other. And at this point, of course, I have a discontinuity in the solution U. So at least after this point, I know that the conservation law is no longer equivalent to the transport equation. And therefore, I, uh, I cannot use the method of characteristics to solve my, uh, my scalar conservation law after this shot. So the point is that we need, or at least we would like to have, a uh, sort of Lagrangian description of the solution that is able to take the shocks into account. So this is the reason why we introduced the following CP particle dynamics. So it is a system of n particles which will evolve on the real line. I will take the convention that each particle has a mass equal to 1 over n so that my the total mass of my system is 1 minus 1. So let me first define the initial positions of the particle by this uh, a little complicated formula, but for the moment it's not important the, what is the, this uh, precise formula. You just have to understand that this is roughly the quantile of order i over n of the initial measure here. Here it is the initial posi position of the particle, g of the particle i. And so uh, the point is I distribute my particles at the beginning, so that they sample from the measure end. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's not really related with the entropy uh, condition. The fact that uh, uh, you cannot use the characteristic after this point just means that you don't do not ha you no longer have this equality to be valid so uh, you well, you don't know what to do after the shock it's uh okay sure but i want a, a concrete method to dis to describe my solution so i want uh, I want a really, a really look, I am really looking for a Lagrangian description of the but evolution of. Uh, but it seems like the speed is very limited. Is there anything special about Yeah, you, a priori, you don't know many things on this solution. So I'm trying to describe this solution. But Khrushchev's theorem remains true uh, even for discontinuous or shocks. And uh, I am, I'm just looking for a description of the solution. Okay, so now I have distributed my uh, particles at uh, time zero. I will assign them a velocity, which will be just the velocity function here lambda roughly evaluated at the point i over n. And now I decide that my uh, particles will uh, uh, travel at constant ve velocity on the real line. Of course, it can happen that two particles 
collide with each other, in which case I decide that they will stick together and form a cluster, the velocity of the cluster being determined by the conservation on the total mass and of the total momentum. More generally, when several clusters collide, then they aggregate together and form a larger cluster, and the velocity of the cluster is once again determined by, uh, by the, the same rule still. So in other words, the velocity of the cluster is just the average of the velocities of the incoming clusters weighted by the number of particles within each cluster. So this is a, a graphical representation of the particle dynamics. So first I distribute my uh, particles here. Then I, I uh, assign them uh, the velocity given by the velocity function lambda. Then I let them evolve. So here, for example, you see there is a cluster with, fi with uh, five particles and the velocity of the cluster is just the average of the initial velocities of each particle contained in the cluster. And here you see there is a, a lonely particle which will never uh, collide uh, with uh, any other particle. So it travels uh, at constant velocity in general and here I, I draw it with uh, a null velocity. Okay, so this dynamics at this level of generality was introduced by Brunier and Grenier to solve uh, scalar conservation laws. But actually, it's uh, such uh, adhesion dynamics uh, were uh, well known from physicists and uh, this uh, for a long time. In particular, it, uh, were it was used as a model in uh, astrophysics and it is also related to uh, systems of pressurized gas gases and, uh, and well, to elementary model in uh, turbulence, essentially because these, uh, this uh, particle system here shares the same phenomenology as the Borger location. So let me give a little more uh, mathematical properties of this dynamics. The first remark you can make is that I decided that at time ze zero, the particles are ranked by the increasing order of uh, their positions, and it will remain the case at all times, because when two particles uh, are at the same position, they will remain at the same posi position uh, for all uh, further times, and they will never strictly cross each other. So my vector here of position uh, takes its values in this polyhedron here, in which all the coordinates are in, in non-decreasing order. And now there's, a remark, uh, there's another remark I can make, is that if I take the position of the particle i at time t, I can always write it as the position this particle would have if it uh, had not seen the other particles, so just this, part, this blue part here corresponds to the free motion of the particle. And then I, uh, can, I can add here a complementary term, which stands for the constraint of remaining stuck in my uh, polyhedron D n here. And the point is that this vector with coordinate kappa here, it is always a normal vector to the boundary of this, uh, of this set at the point at which the system lies. Okay? So this uh, undoes this uh, representation here with the structure of an ordinary differential equation with normal reflection at the boundary of the convex set Dn. So this is, a, well, I wrote it in the sense of Tanaka, but it's a, a general, uh, uh, well, it's a well-known notion, I would say. And uh, a very important property of such reflected differential equations is that they are contractive for all the LP distances. So if I take two realizations of my particle system, starting from uh, two uh, different configurations, and I let them evolve, and I look at the LP distance between these two vectors at time t, then it will always be lower than the LP distance at time zero. Okay. So this will be uh, very important in the future of my talk. So let me still make a little probabilistic interlude to explain that this uh, particle system, which uh, as I claimed at the beginning, uh, is completely deterministic, but it can be seen as uh, an asymptotic limit in the small noise regime of a, diffu of a diffusion process. So uh, this diffusion process is generally called system of one base interacting diffusions, describes the evolution of Brownian particles on the real line, having, uh, as you can see here, a small noise. 
and such that the particle uh, ranked in the, in the position J has a constant drift uh, and will only exchange its drift, its drift with, uh, at collision with other particles. So here is a representation. The red line stands for uh, uh, realization of the sticky particle dynamics with two velocity vectors like this and like this. And here you have the two Brownian particles. While they are fra far from each other, then they are essentially driven by the drift, which, fo which follows the asymptotic of the sticky particle dynamics. And when the two particles uh, are close to each other, each time they cross, they exchange their drift. So they will always be uh, brought to be get closer to each other. This is exactly this uh, sticky effect that you can see here. And of course, the more you decrease the noise, then the more you, the closer you get to the uh, deterministic limit. And so at the end, you converge to the sticky particle dynamics. So this uh, diffusion process here is not only interesting because of this uh, representation here, but it, also, it also has a, uh, an independent life, uh, in particular in the world of uh, stochastic portfolio theory. It is used as a model for the evolution of equity markets. In the world of the theory of Brownian cues and in the study of uh, viscous versions of the scalar conservation law that I am interested in. So let's come back to the conservation law. So I will now define, uh, I will denote by UN the empirical cumulative distribution function of my particle system. Mu NT will refer to the empirical distribution. And the first uh, result you can state is that if you take C to be on the grid of mesh 1 over N here, then the empirical cumulative distribution function, so at N fixed, already satisfies the entropy condition of Khrushchev here. So I will explain uh, this. Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. It is the entire sum. Here I am just I'm just looking at the drift of the particle J of the particle I, and here I am counting the number of uh, particles that are located below. Ah, this, uh, this particle here. So it's uh, n times the empirical cumulative distribution function of the system. So this only depends on the position of the particle in the system, on the rank of the particle among the other particles. Okay? So this will rema remain constant as long as I do not cross, cross another particle. And of course, I take this value of the drift to be the velocity that the same particle would have in the sticky particle dynamics. Okay, so I will explain this result uh, in uh, one minute, but we can already observe that taking again C to be zero and one, we obtain that our uh, discrete solution is an exact weak solution to the conservation law, but of course, with a, a not with a good initial condition, discretized initial condition here. Uh, 